All the trials we cover are high profile, whether they're high profile in the city where they're being tried or nationally or internationally like the George Floyd case. They're high profile. And there's always the, we're not going to get a fair trial. We got to move the case, da, da, da. At the end of the day, everybody gets a fair trial. I've seen it too many times. But now, new filings again in the George Floyd case. Let me read something from Alexander King's attorney. Uh, who said this, that counsel has learned that there are in excess of 1,700 local articles focusing on this prosecution. Many of the articles stem from comments from the state of Minnesota and his several state actors. Okay, I, I get it. It's a big case. It's a super big case. And it's probably really big where you are, right? It's like bigger than big. George Floyd is everywhere. The case is everywhere. But they're concerned. They're very, very concerned, and they want to, they want to do a few things. And, and one of them, obviously, is explore changing the venue. And while they may say they want to change it because they can't get a fair trial because of publicity, they're really looking for a better jury pool. That, I mean, let's be honest. That's, that's what defense attorneys do when they want to change a venue. They want to change it to some place where they think maybe they'll have a better shot. Not more fair but a better shot to win. And they're just doing their jobs, I understand, but take it with a grain of salt. Uh, let's bring in our team of legal journalists. Joining us right now, Julie Janae, Court TV crime and justice reporter. Ted Rowland still with us. And Michael Ayala, Court TV anchor, uh, with us as well. Julia, let me start with you. Um, it's, it's not just King, right? I mean, are all of them in on this, uh, on change of venue? There are two defendants who have filed these motions for change of venue. Tu Tau, former officer Tu Tau, also filed one focusing on Kings. He's specific in where they want to move this trial to. They want to move it to Stearns County. Out of the seven counties that are right there in the greater Minneapolis area. And looking at the map, it's about 66 miles away from Hennepin County where this cases currently being tried and in St. Cloud County it's about it's again 66 miles northwest it is not metropolitan in that area in the way that it is of course in Minneapolis and the demographics are different that's not something that's laid out in the filings but there is a difference in the diversity in these communities more african-american homes in hennepin county according to the u.s census than there are in stearns county so that is one of the asks specifically from king but two of these defendants do want this case moved michael ayala you know lawyers can dismiss jurors for any reason or no reason at all right with their peremptory challenges uh, except in certain circumstances, things like race. Um, when they go for change of venue, that's usually the major factor, but they will never say it. They will never admit it. Um, and they will never argue it because you can't, right? You can't, you can't get a change of venue because you don't like the color of the skin of the potential jurors, correct? Oh, that's absolutely true, Vinny. And I want to uh, take us to a case that's instructive, I think is lines up very nicely to this case. Let's go back to the Rodney King case where you had a viral video, a uh, video that seen by millions and millions, I don't know, countless times. And you had that case and the, you had a number of defendants, police officers. And what did they want to do? They wanted to move it from L.A., out to Simi Valley, Ventura County, where you had a much different jury pool. They were successful in doing that, and what happened? They were acquitted. So there's a playbook for this kind of thing, and defense attorneys are they're bound to provide a vigorous defense, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to put their client in the best position to succeed. Yeah, I mean, both sides, both sides want to do that, obviously. Both sides want to win, right? Ted, lawyers play to win. Um, they have different ethical obligations inside the courtroom. Prosecutors need to seek justice and the truth. Defense attorneys don't have to seek justice, don't have to seek the truth. Uh, their only obligation is to do the best job possible for their clients. And I don't know if jurors understand that, um, but that's the truth. Uh, and, and the truth, Ted, in all these cases that are, that are whether... Whether we're looking at the Ahmad Arbery case, whether we're looking at this case, whether we're looking at a case where it's flip-flopped, um, you know, who the defendants are, it's always part, but they never say it, right? It's never spoken. It's like whispered. Like, we could talk about it on TV, but I even have a hard time getting practicing attorneys to talk about it on TV because they just don't want to go there. But I know, but I know it's the primary issue that they consider in jury selection and in venue change. 
Well, yeah, a lot of people think they win or lose the case in jury selection. Ahmaud Arbery is a little different. They want to keep it in the small town in rural Georgia. The last thing they want to do is move that to a larger metropolitan area. I lived in Minnesota for several years, and the every inch you move out of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, it becomes less diverse, yes, but even more importantly, more conservative, more pro-police, you are going to have a much different jury pool you know, up in St. Cloud than you would in Minneapolis night and day. It's never going to get granted because it doesn't make sense. The jury pool in the Minneapolis and Hennepin County is the largest. So if you're looking for somebody who doesn't know about this case, it's actually in Hennepin County. Uh, they get newspapers. They have the Internet in St. Cloud. Everyone in that state knows everything about this case. Yeah, and they all can get Court TV. You can download the app. You can get us on your digital antenna. You can get us, you know, anywhere. All right. Um, there's another motion that was filed that was interesting because we've seen it in another high-profile case. Um, an anonymous jury, a request for an anonymous jury, which is to me is fascinating. Let's take a listen to uh, Earl Gray, the attorney, again, for Thomas Lane, the rookie officer. One of the problems with getting a fair trial now is that there's such adverse publicity that jurors themselves, even if they felt the individual was innocent, would be afraid to find him not guilty because of the public uproar. And we've seen that in trials in the past where jurors are um, contacted and they're not protected because the internet exposes who they are. So my answer not as of today, is that they would not get a fair trial with the jury trial. You're always hoping for one, but it's a sad reality that right today they would not get a fair trial. Julia Janae, we've seen this also in the R. Kelly case, but the, the, the roles are reversed, which is interesting, and for completely different reasons. But I guess they want the jury to come in and no one knows who they are. Right. They want to keep that off of the record. They say that this case just has so much notoriety, not just popularity, but notoriety. It's insinuating that there's some negativity that could be associated with these jurors who sit on this uh, on this panel. And so that's the argument that's being made specifically by Officer Tutal, his attorney. That's the one that filed this motion, not only to keep the names and addresses of these jurors off of the record, but also they want them sequestered during this trial. They don't want them to be able to go home, to be able to watch anything on TV, to be able to talk to anyone. They want them sequestered throughout the duration of this trial. You know, Michael, there was a case, and, and Ted's going to laugh, there was a case down in uh, Orange County, Florida, um, <laughs> for the most hated woman in America, the most hated woman in America. And there were throngs of people outside that courthouse. Uh, if, if they were selling pitchforks, they all would have bought one, right? And, and they all felt the same way. I mean, I kind of felt the same way as well. That jury was not anonymous. That jury found her not guilty. That jury did TV interviews afterwards, and, th and they're fine. I mean, what are we talking about here with anonymous jurors? You know, um, I think one aspect of these trials that is underappreciated is the stress that's on juries in certain situations. And I think this is one of them. Um, you can see the upheaval that this case has caused. It's not, I don't think it's apples to apples, the comparison that you're making. I think that was a very different situation. This has caused incredible social unrest. We've seen guns involved. We've seen very passionate people on both sides. And I think with the proliferation of uh, the media, the online, bloggers, and everything else, you're going to see a lot more of these things because it becomes more and more important to keep these jurors comfortable, to make sure that they feel safe to do their job properly. So I think in this instance, it's a little different, Vinny. I think there is a chance for some serious repercussions based on what happens in this trial. And we have to make sure that the jurors feel as little pressure in, in, to do the right thing as they, as they uh, can. I, I understand it. I'm just so, so afraid of secret court. I don't like secret court. I like wide open courts. And by the way, if, if you read our 13th juror comments, there are people, you know, and their names are on there, who are split in this case. There are people who believe that this could be or should be a not guilty verdict, and they're expressing their opinions online. So I, I think they're overstating it a little bit, the, the defense, but we shall see. We shall see. Thank you, everyone.